Uh, we're going to turn our attention uh, to one that cuts across to many different aspects of our lives. It's nutrition. And I've got with me Dr. Francesca Bronca, who oversees our nutrition work at WHO. Uh, this year, the World Health Assembly is taking up the issue of developing a core set of indicators for maternal, infant, and child nutrition. Uh, why is that? Why is that useful? Why do we need that? Hello. First of all, we need to know that addressing the health and nutrition of child uh, of children is uh, going to be very important for a country's development. We calculate that uh, there is about 200 million children who are not reaching their full development potential and that's a big deal because simply addressing stunting would be reducing, uh, would be improving the gross domestic product by 3%. If we improve the anemia of women we could get uh, the productivity of adults improve up to 17 percent. So major impact and uh, this can be achieved by simple cheap investment and uh, we calculate that for every dollar invested in nutrition there would be a return of 18 dollars which is you know much more than any investment you can expect if you if you work on stock exchange. It really is one of these things that a little bit of investment raises the tide uh, for all ships, isn't it? Uh, there's some ambitious goals that have been set for 2025, right? Yeah, that's correct. The Wealth Health Assembly realized that nutrition is so important that you need to set goals. And they set goals in 2012 for 2025 for a 13 year sustained action in nutrition. And these goals are for child nutrition, to get children growing in the right way, so a reduction of stunting, to get children uh, uh, well nourished without acute malnutrition, so targets on wasting, to avoid them to become overweight, which is uh, now uh, a problem more and more for lower income countries, to stop the epidemic of overweight, to get uh, adequate uh, breastfeeding rates to get uh, uh, lower children with low birth weight and to get uh, less women with anemia. So these are the six global uh, targets uh, that uh, WHO set and unfortunately I must say the world is not on track to reach them. Uh, can you talk about some of the challenges uh, of why we're not on track? What are some of the challenges that you're faced often with in trying to address this problem and, and what does that mean for the post-2015 uh, development goals? We're not on track, although we're, we're having some progress, because the challenge is uh, in different sectors. We need to provide, first of all, a good food environment, and that has to happen throughout the lifestyle. We say that we need really to start from the first thousand days. We need already to have adolescent women having a good nutrition so that they are ready when they bear a child to have a, a good uh, uh, pregnancy. So that food environment is still a challenge and unfortunately there are contrasting interests and there is policy incoherence and so that uh, that goal is somehow difficult to achieve. Then we want to see that effective nutrition interventions are delivered to all children and women. We know what these interventions are but unfortunately the coverage is still very low so we need a greater investment there. We need greater better governance, we need better commitment of policy makers uh, to make this happen. You know, you mentioned just a moment ago the issue of over, overweight, uh, but there's also the issue of hunger. How do you run these parallel tracks like this? How, how, how do you uh, reconcile trying to address hunger issues and trying to address overweight issues? Well, they're actually parts of the same problem. We have what we call a double burden of malnutrition in many countries. Look at South Africa, for example. You have an incredible number of uh, women who are overweight or obese, you know, over 40%. And still you have about 10% of women who are underweight. And this is in the same country. Often in the same community, you have uh, uh, people who have, in the same family even, you have individuals with overweight and people where, for example, vitamin and mineral deficiency and the common pathway is the fact that actually the, the food environment is poor so people don't get enough access to the right healthy food throughout the year because they can't afford it 
or because simply it's not distributed, because what gets distributed is maybe products which are you know, giving a greater return to the manufacturers, but not necessarily healthy. So, so these are the common pathways, but also you know, the poor uh, environment. And this is unfortunate, the common aspect is often poverty. So people living in poor neighborhoods with, with uh, uh, not good water and sanitation, they're also getting the malnutrition. So maybe you get too much energy, but the quality of the diet and uh, the risk of uh, getting malnutrition is high. Well, Francesco, I'm going to let you go at that point because I know you've got a lot of work uh, ahead of you this week. Thank you for coming by and at least introducing us to this topic, and I'm sure we'll talk more with you uh, as progress happens this week at the World Health Assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you.